How does Mill play that better now? It's still fine. It, like, t the card Tasha's Hideous Laughter got worse, though, of course. Good hand, good hand. Hmm. Second did a bit awkward. Can maybe discard it. The mail urge to five. Five different colored versions of the same shirt. Yeah, I actually own two of the pink Run the Jewel shirts because I bought one at Vegas and I gained uh, some weight and now I've got a bigger version. <laughs> so I can uh, wear it at any size. Or I guess two sizes specifically. Um... Obviously, you gotta have a hard decision here. I think I'm just gonna play a tapped Blood Crypt. I think the ability to discard Kroxa to either Season Pyromancer or Liliana is probably like a bit too nice here. And maybe getting the cards more important. I think Blue Living End is a good deck in Modern. Uh, if you mean like Mono Blue with Asphodel, there's not like much reason to play that over like the Cascade versions now. You talked about Mono Black before, do you plan to test something? Yeah, but don't tell chat. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I keep seeing like the Mono Black lists and I was watching Everos play uh, Trellon's Mono Black 5-0 lists and boy, boy does like four expedition map, Cabal Coffers, Urborg, Castle Loctwain like really seem like something to me where it's like your expedition maps uh, can tutor for Either half of your Cabal Coffers, Urborg combo, of course. But then, but then, um, you're also able to, if like you're, if you have all the mana you need, you can get a Castle Loctwain and use that as um, a mana sink, which is, which is pretty interesting, I feel. Um, and so, like, I don't know, I'm just trying to, like... And then, like, like some lists play, like, a Profane Tutor or two, which also, like, helps you in assemble your mana engine. Or you can find something big to cast, too. It's it's all, it's all like, I feel like it, the, the that deck came together pretty well. I think I cast one of the two Kroxas. Maybe not. Yeah, let's just Season Pyromancer discard both. We get the tokens. We can maybe spend our mana on something else. They might have another Drown, though. If they do, that's okay. We get to Kroxa, one of the last two cards on the other hand, have the ability to escape another one. We drew all three Kroxas this game, actually. And no Lurus over there is just so... It just feels so good in spots like this. Please stop my tapping. Okay, sorry. I don't I don't feel like I'm doing it anymore. Let me... I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to just try to listen for it. I'll turn my music off. Professor Booba? What? <laughs> Is that Professor Onyx? Uh, I, didn't, I, I didn't watch the whole league. I watched like the first two matches. Yeah, maybe something's rattling. I can't hear it though. Yeah, maybe it's my leg. I'm sorry. I don't know. I, I'm always like, you know, twitching. Um... Oh, maybe I should probably I should probably just cast this last Kroxa because if they if they, if they do have a Drowner as their last card, it's pretty devastating and and like with them being only on one card, there's like really nothing besides Drown that's that scary. And if we can just get to a spot where we're both top decking, but I have Kroxa, Spire on the yard, and Dead of the Bugbear, and they have nothing, it's just that good. They had a Heat. Yeah, that, Heat is also another card that um I'd want to just cast the Kroxa first. They main phase the Dress Down. Um. I think I'm just gonna escape Kroxa first, then probably cast the Ragavan. It's kind of close. Cause I'll one of the other Kroxas, and then keep one Kroxa, one Season Pyromancer in the yard. So they they drew a random card after the dress down. We'll see what it is. Holy Heat might be kind of bad, but they just concede. I think I think this matchup's probably pretty good. This is definitely a matchup where Liliana is actually very strong. As opposed to some other grindier matchups where Liliana is is weaker. Um, one thing that I have found a bit awkward. So, so for the for a, in a lot of matchups like Hammer Time, Affinity, 
um, Rhinos. I think this is part of my separate plan. But a, a lot of matchups, you're going to be cutting the Kroxas for HGAs. Hidzutsu. I said it, I said it right earlier, but c consumes all. Uh, but in this matchup, I actually think you want both. And there is absolutely tension between Kroxa and these two car and this cards. But it, it is also the case that both of these cards are, are very much... Um, very much premium cards in the matchup. Like they're they're both like absolutely cards um, that you're really excited to have. And so I, I think that it's kind of fine that there is um that there's some tension because because they're both so premium. And it's also true like if you have crooks in the yard, you don't have to catch your HCA. Um, you can you can kind of plan around it some and sometimes. Not always, but sometimes. Uh, Sam, thank you for the 23 months. Appreciate you. Mulligan that hand and keep this one, putting back the mountain, I guess. Is four Graven Cairns awkward? Uh, sometimes, yeah. Here, here's the thing about Graven Cairns. If you want to do the really powerful thing of playing four copies of Den of the Bugbear, which is maybe more important now than ever that you lost Luris' blood insurance, um, if you want to be, if you want to do the powerful thing and play four Den of the Bugbear and play uh, four Voidwalker and play Liliana and play Turok, you have to play four Graven Cairns and an Urn Borg. Um, and, and, and so like so like you you up your power level you don't actually you don't actually diminish your consistency that much like it really you really only have to mulligan hands and have two graven cairns um but you also make yourself weaker to blood moon and you can't play blood moon yourself but it, it, it's a trade-off like you know it's a, it's a, and it's a trade-off that i think you're um happy enough to take cutting darcy from red Me, it does hurt me too but like there's really no other way to play like this many uh oh brutal i guess we can bolt the kaito on their upkeep uh, there's really no other way to play this many. Oh, they have two drowns. So we can't bolt the Kaito effectively. Shoot. I guess I can take a drown and they'll cast the iteration on their turn. But if they just hold up drown, it's pretty bad. I guess they'll do this. Um... I could have bolted the token. Violent, think we Twitch Prime, appreciate you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all yeah, it's also true. Yeah, I, I agree completely. Like Blood Moon is like a really unpopular card right now. Blood Moon is maybe at an all-time low. Because of uh Beseju being like so popular in the main deck of Tron and Titan. Like Besa yeah, tr like it it is possible Blood Moon's at an all-time low in modern right now. So I, I think it makes a lot of sense to like be okay being weaker to Blood Moon at the moment. Yeah, I think this deck's really fun to play. I think it's very good too. I've liked this deck a lot. Spell Bomb, uh, pretty good against my Crooks of Plan here, obviously. Another hand is Drown Heat, new mystery card. Yeah, Magus is maybe at an all time high. This was so weird, right? Why am I using the Red Land of Kami? This this one? Uh, I mean, the 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 cost of playing a uh, Sokazan is really low in a deck like this, where you're red black. You have a lot of filter lands. This is definitely a big draw to red black, because you get to play uh, both of the channel lands. You get to play um, you get to play a really good amount of. Uh, of utility lands and have that have that flood insurance and i know that like uh like jun saga gets to play saga but you know it's worse on your color fixing worse against south by moon but like the like this is you know some flood insurance it's, you're probably overthinking it to be honest well Deanna not looking too good here they may just let it resolve because they've got the ninja to sack but obviously okay trading it for drown of the lock Am I liking this deck or the Mardu list more? Oh, they're pretty different archetypes. Like this is very much a mid-range list. The other one's a lot more aggressive. Um, I'm, I'm liking both, but it's also like pretty early to, to say which one's better. They can't drown this. They can't spell pierce it. What a top deck. Holy shoot. 
just casual five for one. <laughs> Maybe even better than that because excellent the yard is also pretty relevant. Uh, I'll leave this back to Black Ragavan, I guess. And like Gross Shadow. Is Model Green Shark competitive now? It already was, I think. It's like he, he, here's the thing about here's the thing about uh, the the Luris ban. I think that I think that you're seeing a lot of like biases that the community had being shattered. That like you know like I've been of the opinion that you've been able to play decks like Tron and Storm and like really whatever you want if you are good and you're prepared. Like anything that's at least somewhat reasonable, like like has been viable for a while, even before the Luris ban. And sh sure, the Luris ban maybe made these decks a little bit more viable. But, like, the, re the reality is, like, people have act, like, like, people just kind of, like, I think are realizing how open the modern format is. Like, there, there are definitely some decisions that are better than others. But, um, but, like, yeah, like, the format, the format is pretty open. The format is pretty open, and the gameplay definitely, I think, also got better with the Luris Band, too, of course. I also hear the tapping. I, 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 I can't hear the tapping. I'm sorry. Maybe I'll look at. I'm. I'm sorry that it's distracting. I. I. I can't hear it though. It could be an issue with my microphone. Um. I hope it's not super distracting. It's pretty distracting. I just don't know what to do. My desk is shaking. I mean, it's always shaking. I don't think that's. That's it. Sounds like the microphone rocking. That fixed it? Okay, I think it was a different cup on my desk. I had a lot of cups. <laughs> I guess for Infamer is bad. Now, I think it's probably good, actually. I just am not playing it because there's, like, a lot of new stuff to be doing. Yeah, I think I think it was this this one cup on the... That was kind of positioned weirdly. It was, like, touching, like, my monitor stand. Is Saga Crooks too much of a nombo? So, um, for most matchups where you bring in Saga, you're going to cut the Crooks says. I found three exceptions to that rule. The matchup we just played, of course, um, uh, Grixis Shadow, where both Kroxa and HGA are premium cards. So I think that having both in your deck while having tension is fine, since like like they're they're both incredible in the matchup. And you also want both against Mill, which is fine because if you exile your graveyard, it, like Kroxa is like just great to Mill over in general. And uh, like killing the crabs, exiling the yards is relevant against Mill. I think you want both against Living End too. I think so. And I, um, so I think I think that I think that in those specific matchups, it's okay to have both together. To be together, but it is intentional that we have three Croaks of main deck, three HGA sideboard, so that you are just able to um, you're just able to have. Uh, a swap in, in matchups where there's tension, like Hammer Time is obviously the biggest one. Hey, you totally think of the 15 months, appreciate you. What about Red Green Prowess for Hexproof spells against Solitude? Um, maybe. I do like, Red Green Prowess is like, <laughs> uh, I mean, so let's. Say, here's here's one thing though about prowess, right? Like, solitude is not the only. You're, you're soft to removal spells in general. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's something we could take a look at. Maybe we've entered the uh, Grixis Shadow bracket. All right, no spells left in our hand. We got a lot of good top decks though. Definitely top deck better than our opponent on average, I think. Shizo definitely not a good one draw though. Ooh, interesting. Main deck Voidwalker in Grixis is not something you see that often. Great draw. 
we did we had a pretty bad day with reanimator but it was we like we won most of our game ones and like lost most of our cyber games to uh graveyard hate which is just how it goes with any reanimator variant Uh, we, we've played both Red Green and Naya Arcanist. I also played Teamer at one point, but I think that was before I started streaming. Yeah, definitely would prefer to Inquisition rather than run the Din into a very, very likely removal spell. Oh, I should have played the Bloodstained Mire because they didn't know about the Shizo, right? How did I Cyborg vs. Hammer? I just wrote a deck guide for this deck for Channel Fireball. Actually, you can find uh, the whole sideboard plan there uh okay let's fire in with the den and then just cast the ragavan if their last card is another one mana removal spell or removal spell then at least we're just top decking good for us that one of their cards was a land bad that the other was a shadow we have lots of good top decks here though Urborg is definitely not one of them, and I can't fear the Ragavan through the Shadow because Shadow is a black creature to block, so I'll just pass here. Could have dashed there. I can't dash and activate Din. I want to activate the Din to bait a removal spell, which which is what happened, and then um, and then play the Ragavan post combat. I, if I had enough mana to dash and Din, I still think you take this line because it's so obvious they have a removal spell. It raging for three months. Appreciate you. Did I play Banton Hunter? I played the uh, Mardu Shadow deck. Well, I'll just attack first. Like, they, they drew a removal spell. Oh, they didn't? Have a dress down. Oh, they would have casted it. They killed it on my main phase. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Wait, they're playing TBR over dress down? Wild. Dress down would have been so much better <laughs> in, in that spot. Yeah, you're, you're right. Yes, I could have I could have dashed it then. I, I missed the line. Okay, we need to draw Season Pyromancer. They could be playing both. What? I, I, how do you, I, you know, I've spent a lot of time building the list. I don't know how you possibly find room for Voidwalker and, and Dress Down and Team of Battle Rage. Like, I, I don't know what you're cutting. <laughs> Um, or at least, like, I don't know how you reasonably uh, make those additions. Maybe, um, I'm not saying that there's not a way, I'm, but I am saying I don't I don't know how you do it. I think I'll have to draw. I'll play one more discard spell. Could we have Chump blocked? Voidwalker can't block. Voidwalker cannot block. It has Shadow. TV are kind of nuts with the dragon. I don't know. It feels kind of win more though, because if you have a big dragon, a big Murktide region, and your opponent can't kill it, uh, like you're probably just winning anyways. Like, obviously, double striking on the eight eight is gonna win a turn sooner. But if you're connect, like, there's not a ton of flying blockers in the format. So, like, I think that, um, like maybe even like I even think that dress down protecting Murktide from from solitude is more is more relevant. Um. If we're talking about like what card is better with uh, with Murktide Regent, I, I I think that maybe even Dress Down is better, just because it protects it from one of the few removal spells that gets it and Murktide. Uh, we can keep this. Obviously, like kind of weird to have all three Croxes in our hand, but because we have the Season to Pyromancer, I think we can keep. Matt's thinking of the eighteen months. Appreciate you. Could we have Chumbo Dead? We didn't have Din in play. We had the uh, Shinka. To be fair, there's quite a bit of creatures being played with either flying and reach. Are there? Cite your sources, I guess. I, I like reach. I, I I don't. What has reach? I'm sure something does. Endurance. Okay. I mean, endurance is already good against the Murktide in general. I and I and it's also like a chump blocker for. That's another thing is like most of the things that block Murktide are like chumping it for a turn. Grazer, okay, okay. 
But like, well, because that's another thing though. Against against Titan, Dress Down is way better against Titan than Team of Battle Rage. So if we're talking about a Boreal Grazer playing Team of Battle Rage over Dress Down, if that's the conversation, you would never ever like make that decision of playing TBR over Dress Down for that card particularly. Yeah, dear. Yeah, yeah. I just I just feel like none of these feel that relevant to me. But obviously, I could be you know, I could be misevaluating it. I, I could be I could be misevaluating it. But for the most part, like I just feel like Dress Down is going to be enough better than Team of Battle Rage enough of the time that I would like basically always play three Dress Down before I played the first TBR. And I, I don't think that you're almost ever looking for another another effect like that. I will take the Ragavan over the TBR here because TBR is so bad in these matchups. Land is obviously what we want. Uh, I guess we dash... They drew a removal spell, they drew a removal spell, but this, it, like, it just connecting with Ragavan to unlock the Season Pyromancer is a really big game here. How do I modify the Bank Control sideboard to hedge against burn? I mean, I'm, streaming is so easy, it's so easy. You should play some cards that gain life on the sideboard. I think it's probably worth the thoughts he's there. Because uh, then, like, if they drew a shadow, the TBR is all of a sudden online, of course. You just play some cards, though, that say gain life. That'll be $5 a month for the rest of your life. Specifically, Weather the Storm, I think. Either Weather the Storm or uh, Blossoming Calm. Um, probably Blossoming Calm, because it has maybe more applications against Belcher, too. But dude, streaming is so easy. Ooh, that's a brutal top deck. What do I cut? Uh, dress downs probably. But it's it's also like that. It's also true. Like a, a card like that is, like the reason why you don't see too many life gain spells in. In um, and Yorion control decks in general though is because it's hard to mulligan for them. Oh man, I'm at thirteen. Damn it. <laughs> What do you think about Quasali Ambusher? Could have a spot in the format without Kitty Cat. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. Quasali Ambusher is like fine in Rhinos specifically. It, it, it's like maybe okay in like Domain Zoo, but I mean this is this is just like you know these questions have started to die down, but it's just like ever since the Loris Bam, people are like my pet card, baby, it's time to shine. But uh, I, I I don't I don't really know exactly like what ambush like ambusher was like good against the ragavan decks and there are in theory less ragavan decks now that uh, uh, Luris is banned maybe not in practice but in theory okay we win if we draw a land mm. okay so I've got so I, I think I should probably just escape Kroxa and then I lose to a top decked. No, I don't lose to anything. I or I lose to I lose to exactly Fatal Push, but Fatal Push or Inquisition on my bolts. But I I beat Drown because I just exiled my whole yard. And oh man, the escape is so awkward still. Do I lose? Do I lose to TBR? I, okay, I do lose to TBR. That's true. Terminate, yeah, terminate, terminate Inquisition. Oh, I could beat an Inquisition theoretically. Yeah, but I, I, I'm probably going to lose the TBR for all my shit talking. We didn't do very well with Grixis Randomair, but, you know, I think I think it was... On paper, we didn't do very well, but we won m most of our game ones, and we lost most of our... We, well, we lost most of our cyborg games to uh, Graveyard Hate cards, and so it's like... That's a pretty normal day for any reanimator variant, and it's it's hard to, like... To sweat those losses too much, I think. The Sue Crooks combo. I mean, I, we, we've talked about this a lot already today, but I, I think in this specific matchup, it's fine because just both cards are such a premium, and you've got control over them. But for the most part, we have got the we've got the Crookses in the main deck, so like you want to board out Crooks against Hammer Time, anyways, and so just like it's like a pretty clean swap to board in these for Hammer Time, and uh, cut the Crookses. Same thing for the uh, like affinity matchup. Season getting two tokens looks solid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, the thing is, it's like, there are very few cards we lose to with the Croxa line. 
Um, your, your line is fine, but it's it's um, kind of reliant on us drawing a land, this, which is maybe pretty reasonable to do. I think that would have been that would have been fine. You just lost the drown. Yeah, that's true. I see the Sunforger. I didn't see the, I didn't see Saffron Sunforger deck now. Yeah, I think that in this deck you want Kroxa and HGA against Shadow, Mill, and Living In. I think there's not any other matchup where you want all three. Why are there four Blood Crypts and only one Black Leaf Cliffs? Uh, in this deck, we're playing four Den of the Bugbears, which while Black Leaf Cliffs is usually a pretty premium mana fixer in red black, when you're playing four Den of the Bugbears, Black Leaf Cliffs loses a lot of its um, a lot of it. You know, like it has diminishing returns to play this many fast lands. Okay, that's fine. I think I'm discarding the Void Walker here. And then main phase terminate this so I don't get it um, countered. Obviously, like dash ragvan hitting removal spell is like a little better. Uh yeah, let's just cast the croaks, I think. I don't know, maybe dashing ragavan is more important. Like there's like there's like no chance. There's no chance that it connects, but I guess the the like discarding this to their Kroxa is gonna be fine. And I think this game maybe is just gonna boil down to if they have the land for Kroxa, um, we need to draw Liliana. And they just don't have a removal spell. This is huge. I, I don't know what they do have. Maybe Team of Battle Rage, <laughs> Team of Battle Rage two lands or something. But now now we can Liliana the the Kroxa, which is just such a big game. Is there a budget replacement for Liliana? Um Maybe you can play like maybe find a way to play both DRC and Bobble. Um, you can play like an extra Turok. You can play Kologon's Command. Like basically, nothing you'd be playing Liliana over is like super super cheap though. Played the John Earth deck that you shared. It was really good. It just felt like it was missing E in the side. I thought I did have E in the side. Maybe I cut it. Um, like I used, to, oh yeah, I think I, I did have E in the side in the, the versions I was playing before Luris was banned, but I, I think I ended up cutting the EEs because I actually main decked a Luris in, in that deck. Um, uh, <laughs> and I, now <laughs> the deck got a little nerfed, but yeah, I, I do, I do like the Jund Unearthed deck. I don't know if I played it on stream last week. I might play some of it this week. I think I'll cast the, cast the Ragavan. Davriel. Uh, yeah, Davriel is actually a pretty reasonable budget replacement for Liliana because it, it does kind of the same thing. It gives you, like, that pressure both against hand and against life total, against big mana combo control. You mean Jund Earth? Yeah, I, I waffle back and forth on wanting to call it Jund Earth. I'm, like, I'm, I'm super, like, I'm super inconsistent about wanting to call it that. For the most part, I don't love the, the cutesy names because I just do so much brewing. I, I tend to like deck names to be pretty clear. But that, that one's pretty good, so I'm definitely more okay with it. Um, I'm not sure what we're doing here. I kind of like play Turok plus Liliana, discard Kologon's Command. And then potentially, if they send both at Liliana, don't block. If they send both at me, chump block one shadow, and then Edict Edict. That's pretty good. But I played Amulet on stream. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. Um, it, would, it would have been a long time ago if I have. I've, I've, I haven't played that much Amulet Lifetime. But I've played enough to like be pretty proficient in it. Um, I don't think I've actually played it. Like Maybe I've played like two leagues since uh, Urza Saga has been legal. But I've played a lot of it before. Or at least like enough of it to be like a somewhat proficient Amulet pilot. Definitely not a master. But for the most part, I don't like to just like, you know, jam stockish lists on stream. I like to, you know, try to do some innovating if I can. Not, not yeah, it's not that I dislike the deck, but it's like, I don't just try to like, you know, re register a, a, you know, an existing deck that's um, a known quantity for the stream. I like to try to do new stuff like you know, we're doing here. 
doing three animator stuff, always try to be innovating and, you know, it's, it's good for the stream and it's also good for me because it's tough to, it's tough to stay as engaged with the game <laughs> as I do. <laughs> and, um, with, without like, you know, without like always being new, doing new things, it's like really tough for me to just like, <laughs> just, uh, just play, just, just play Aimless today, just play Rhinos today, just play a stock deck today. Maybe bad to cast the thought seize. I think I'm okay trying to get the uh, added value. I played the the Mardu Shadow deck at the Hunter Burton. Um, wait, they didn't. They could have killed me, or at least like dealt me thirteen, right? Yeah, I sh I should be at two life right now. This is like yeah, they I don't know. They might not know that Dress Down pumps the shadow. Maybe I'm missing something. Why well, Thoughtseize over Inquisition? Because I mean, this is the this is the free free Thoughtseize, and I don't think that the two life mattered that much, and so I get to keep this Inquisition, which is like relevant against a uh, top deck. I guess not drown a lot because they just kill the Ragavan. So they get to escape the Kroxa again. You wouldn't have been able to play thoughts. Yeah, if they if they dressed on me, yeah. But I mean, I, I would just cast the Inquisition. It's not really that different. Oh, I see, I see. Um, I mean, I'm gonna plus the Liliana so I can try to edict the Crocs the next turn. That being said, I I'm dead to a removal spell. I think that this is still the line. Close game, close game. This matchup seems pretty fun so far, I'll say, also. So our second match in a row playing against it. We do get the chump block off. Huge. Two cards in their hand. Uh, they discarded the blood crypt we knew about, so both cards in my opponent's hand are unknowns. Um, yeah, we do, we, yeah, Inquisition first. Um, I guess they they did have one unknown. Maybe we should, we're supposed to Inquisition first there. Okay, we don't have any Delirium cards. I don't think it matters. We should just like prioritize leaving creatures in the yard. Close game, close game. They're gonna have to, so they can get three cards in the yard here by discarding a card and fetching. I feel like every matchup of Tron is following this kind of archetype. Main decking Voidwalker makes the Tron matchup very fun, actually. <laughs> main deck Void uh, Main deck Voidwalker makes this match makes the Tron matchup very fun. <laughs> you get to cast Ulabogs and Karns. I think that I think you have to do exclamation point deck. I think the list was a different deck actually. They drown, but I can escape again. Um a little less decisions on what we get to leave in the yard or sorry, more decisions because it's ggs and looks like we are gonna buy the skin of our teeth be two and oh both matches against shadow I, again like the the metagame is just very much unpredictable to a certain extent and it, it, I think it will. I think that in like a week or two, you're gonna see me speaking speaking with a little bit more authority on what is or isn't well positioned. But like for like small nuances, like Grixis Murktide versus Blue Red Murktide versus Jeskai versus Teamer, it just it's just too soon. It's just way too soon. And I re I really don't like to just to say things to say things. I really like to try to feel like I believe everything I say. Thank you so much, sweetheart. Which is the first matchup we won. Uh, both matches this league have been against Grixis Shadow. Just like Bank Control, you're gonna play a few weeks ago. I mean, that deck's pretty powerful. I've been playing it a bunch uh, in various meta games. I think it's probably gonna change some, but I think it's pretty good overall. Okay, definitely a hand where Liliana shines. Um, gonna go after the mana here. Did my quest at HBMO go? Not that well. I mean, I, I you know. Hunter Burns definitely a very special tournament, and just getting to hang out with your friends and have a good time is is the quest, I suppose. Uh, but and I, I did have an excellent time. I did get to enjoy spending some time with my friends. We invented a new game called One Two Three Four Five Six, which I've been 
raving about it. It was so fun. <laughs> you, it doesn't sound very fun, but it actually was, surprise, to our surprise, where you get in a circle with your friends, and the goal is to um, pass the dice around, rolling a one, two, three, four, five, and then six. And But every time you get to three, then you get to add a rule to make it just a little bit easier. So an example of a rule is you have to roll until you get a one to start, but we, we edited it, edited that to, um, let's discard Liliana. We edited that to allow you to start roll. If you roll a six, then you just, you just start counting down. So you, you can go, then the game becomes six, five, four, three, two, one. So the first roll is cut, um, cut or the time it takes to get the one is cut in half. It just starts going faster and faster as, uh, you get more and more rules. <laughs> You know, it, it was just kind of a goofy thing we started, but it was it didn't actually it ended up actually being like the highlight of the tournament. We played it for like an hour, <laughs> and we did we did actually beat it too. Should you be still running heat with no bobble? It depends on what your list is, but for the most part, you should have bobble if you have heat. Yeah, I I did top eight the last Hunter Burton. Um, not not as much luck this time around. Ooh, um, they misclicked. There's, okay, so they, they they were trying to cast Smashing, then they misclicked, played it as a land, and conceded. Brutal. I do think that this matchup is historically pretty bad. Um, but I will say the Lilianas definitely help. Definitely help a matchup like this. Do you want Chalice, Chalice on two, or... Oh, sorry, I guess the Terminates need to go, actually. Sounds fun until that one friend starts adding rules to make the game harder. I mean, it kind of depends on who you're playing with, but we did have a friend who who did have that goal, yeah. No, if they, if they, no, if they top deck like Belcher, we just ultimate Liliana. We split it Belcher versus lands. I'm playing an Ashiok? I guess so. Nothing else really does anything. Not that this does anything. I, I, I guess Ashiok's actually kind of good against Recross. That's true. Kozlik's returns for any um, Sanctifier in back. i try this. Love to see no Leyline. Alright. Pretty goofy hand besides the recross. We'll take the recross. Yeah, but like one of the one of the other rules we made was like if um so if your if your goal is to get a three, if you roll a two, it just cycles and goes to the next one, so you basically get a re-roll on that. There's a there's a few more, obviously. Um I think I'll take the Valkan Awakening, because their hand is kind of nonsense at the moment. How good is Saga now that Lurus is gone? It's it's probably not as main deckable as it was. Like, I consider the card to be pretty main deckable with Lurus around, and now it's a bit more up in the air. It's going to take some time before we, um, it's going to take some time to realize, I think. Ashok doesn't interact with recross. Well, it, it, it doesn't. But what you do is you let them recross, and then you untap, you play Ashok, then you minus on them, and then their recross pile is all messed up, is what it does. I'm going to die to Patch of the Titan. It was better with Thoughtseize because we we're soft to like both recross and land Belcher here. I don't know. We, we also like kind of need to establish the Liliana. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Okay. Game three. It's been the play. Hope we have a Ragavan on the play. Hopefully we dodge a uh, Leyline again. Yeah, I've played some Lotus Field. It's pretty good. I'm gonna play some more of it this week, I think. It kind of depends on how it goes. I'm not sure if I'm recording my Channel Fireball video tonight or tomorrow. Probably tomorrow. I usually like to give it like an extra day if I can. 
I find anything cool. I think Ragavan is the next ban. Uh, it's too early to say, to speak with any kind of authority. But um, I, I don't expect Ragavan to get banned anytime soon. But that is not, um, I'm not responsible if it ever does get banned. Reanimator has a really good burn matchup. That might be it. Ooh. Oh wait, our hand's actually pretty good against Leyline. Oh, thank you Liliana. Smithing with eight months, appreciate you. I wanted to buy Elden Ring. I set a goal to read the entire Wheel of Time series by the end of the year. Well, I will say that um, these games, the, the Dark Souls games, they, they do tend to be better. I guess there's not really any reason to cast the ritual. They, they do tend to be better at the beginning where there's like more room to discover stuff. And there's also like more like online interaction that's really interesting and fresh. So if that, you know, if that, if that impacts your decision, maybe I would recommend uh, playing the game. I kills Liliana, pitching Desperate Ritual. They also discarded a recross the paths, which is bad for me. So they probably have another one. Maybe they don't have mana. Oh boy. If they if they go green source recross as their last two cards, good beats, dude. We just <laughs> can't beat the perfects. Okay, they don't have the perfects, thankfully. Can't beat the perfects, but we could maybe be less than perfect, huh? Have them dead in the next two turns with the den. So that means they have to recross this turn, or they probably lose, right? Fuck. I guess not. Alright, Liliana of the Veil is the best draw, I think. Alright, not a green source. I do think that their last card is recross. But now we're actually killing them next turn. So I don't know how to get out of this. Well. A 3-0. No. Feels pretty good. Beating one of our one of our bad matchups in Belcher, I think. Yeah, Din is Din of the Bunker is really good. Which is definitely why I think it, it is worth it in Rakdos to play the full four Din with the full four Graven Cairns and the Herb Warg to filter that that early red mana into black. Especially now that you know people don't have Lurus as that mana sink, having access to Din is a pretty big game. There's also definitely an uptick in, in blue white control and Din of the Bugbear is great against them. But like even if you don't even even if you don't tutor the uh, tutor the Cauldra, if your opponent knows it's in your deck, like you tutor game one, you don't tutor uh, game two, like they're still gonna worry about you having Cauldra in your hand, and they're still going to like potentially Oh, I should have got Swamp actually. I guess I'm still gonna get Swamp. They revealed Obosh, so I, I think I need to get the Swamp to play around Blood Moon some. They do have Blood Moon. I think I have to take the Ragavan out of this <laughs> this one land hand though. Then I think I play. I think I actually played nothing. Just like they're stuck on mana, so like letting them use their mana here is probably pretty bad. Yeah, letting them use their stomp here is pretty bad. And if they do top off for Blood Moon next turn, I can go dash Ragavan and cast Woodwalker. Three giver, one culture, three nettle system hammer. Yeah, hammer is just such a um dude, would you have drawn all lands so far this game? Put Lurus in our hands. Lurus will save us. Okay, they drew their third land. But they're not casting anything. Weird.
Okay, so now I'm actually I'm gonna cast the Crooks of first, and then I'm gonna cast the Voidwalker because I actually I actually want the Voidwalker to die, go to the yard for Crooks, because uh, Crooks is just so good in this matchup. Discard of Fury. They wait. They didn't kill. They didn't use. They, they didn't kill. <laughs> What? So gonna Blood Moon with Bolt up for Ragavan? Dude, how do you play around Ragavan this hard? They didn't even they could have at least stomped the Voidwalker too. Do I let them bolt the Ragavan? I think so. If they're gonna play around it this hard, I think I'd rather just, them just bolt the Ragavan than bolt the Voidwalker. And then, like, I can maybe cast, like, uh, Season Pyromancer off this. I guess they might just stomp the Voidwalker, though. But, like, I'm just never going to connect. I'm never going to connect with the Ragavan if they're going to play around the Ragavan this hard. I think we wait attack and play Trog, and they got to cast the Bolt. Well, that's the thing, though. It's, like, if if they Bolt my Voidwalker, like, at least I get in three damage here. I still have the Voidwalker in play. Like if I just make them bolt the the Voidwalker, I, I am I am never I am never getting value out of the Ragavan. They've like committed to just playing around it as hard as they can. But at least I get a minimum three damage here. We only have one basic swamp in the deck. I I think that is the cost of playing. Uh, you could you could play a second basic swamp, but I think that is the cost of playing the four dead of the bugbears. Is just one basic swamp, and it's also true like not that many decks play Blood Moon these days. Like this deck does, it's not that popular of a list though. You're gonna you're colder to Blood Moon, but your mana is more powerful. It's just a trade off you take. What stuff do I put on the wall behind me? It's kind of a collage of like inside jokes from the channel over the years. It's all kind of crumbling now, but it's it's kind of part of the fun, I guess. Think I want HCA, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think I got the Void Walkers for the three HCAs and the Cold Guns command. Obviously tension with Krokso, but I think that's probably okay in this matchup. Croak is already like getting kind of relict to death anyways. I kind of maybe I'll cut the third Krokso for a terminate. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of inside jokes. Got the dive down, podcast up there. I've got Simeon Spirit Guide being banned. You probably can't quite see it, but it's a meme of that in Harambe. The wide no kill is like all off the board. A lot of pictures of my dog, Athena. We've got Gab's yellow hat here. We've got the shrine, the shrine to Clothis, our god, up here. Bunch of memes I made. We need the trophy in the background. Yeah, I, I'm i trying to... I want to do a new background. This one's been great. I, I love the conspiracy board, but... Um, I've been wanting to do a new one. There's just, like, not a clean way to, like... I guess I could, like... I could probably, like, fit it down here, actually. Hmm. It's just been sitting next to my desk. I don't, I'm, I don't have a case for it or anything. Yeah, but maybe I could uh, just put it like to my right on like a little stand or something. Trophy cam. <laughs> it's funny. Um, and you know, Nate posted a video of him opening the uh, the second place trophy. It was really nice. Should follow him on Twitter. Hang it from the board. <laughs> Deal. Yeah, it was a really sweet video. Apparently, uh, my friend Madison, who drew the painting... I can maybe pull it up. Uh, my friend Madison, who drew the... It was really wholesome. She drew the she drew the painting, and she was, like, very touched to see that he was really happy with the, the little painting I commissioned for him. Okay, let's... Uh, Inquisition, two Blood Moons and a Bolt. I guess we're going to go after the Blood Moons this game. 
Vamos mostrar o vídeo real quick. Que nossa grande querida enviou. Agora vou fazer aqui o um react rapidinho. O um unbox pra gente ver como é que veio, tá? Mas. It was really cool how he did a really good job editing it. Yeah, it's a really expensive box. I can't remember if I told them I was getting the. You guys should all also all follow Menino. Follow Menino Day on Twitter, by the way. He's great. Always posting a lot of uh, living end updates. Yeah, Menino Ney is jacked. <laughs> he, uh, he is uh, he's definitely jacked. Yeah, but I um I commissioned that for him because Madison she in our friend group we uh we do some drafts sometimes, and. Uh, I've got one. I've got a demonic tutors one. I, I got one for. I got a demonic tutors one for demonic tutors also. But, um, you know, play the ragavan, let it die to bolt, terminate uh, their ragavan. Yeah. After every trophy, he does one push out. <laughs> I should have done that. I have done you know more push ups than I did during the trophy race. <laughs> Yeah, this, this, the second place one was. I like this one a lot. He's got his kid holding the trophy too. <laughs> she's also follow Benino Day on Twitter and Twitch. He's still streaming too. He's still grinding. It was a very wholesome moment. It's nice of him to, to post this for sure. I guess I shouldn't cast the command now because then I just let them use the mana for their bolts pretty easily. Did they send you an actual trophy? No, I, I sent I sent them. I, I I bought them and sent them. So there's lightning bolt, Obanish, two mystery cards. Yeah, so I commissioned a Demonic Tutors for Demonic Tutors, and then a Living In for Menino Ne, and then a Death Shadow for Ginger. But I don't, I don't think Ginger's gotten his yet, because um, I, I didn't ship them out on the same day, because I didn't have his, uh, some details I needed to internationally ship to the strange land of Canada. Yeah, I think, I think making them use the treasure there is about as much value as we're going to get off out of the second Ragavan. So we have Terminate for their Obosh, Fatal Push for their Din now, and I guess Basic Swamp for uh, Blood Moon. Keep playing my lands because of uh, Season Pyromancer, I guess. Season Pyromancer um, and Kroxa seem like our best draws. Any mirror for destroying the treasure to get an attack in. You could do that, but then you don't get to make them discard a card, so it's kind of hard to like think that like the attack is gonna be worth more than the card necessarily. Obviously it could be. Yeah, push push like killing the the most of the incarnations is definitely being a, a pretty big cost, I feel. Obviously we still have bolts in the deck. But this is um I think kind of an understated reason why push is less popular than it has been. Croxa, Liliana of the Veil, um, Lightning Bolts, Season Pyromancer, all very good draws though. Um, shoot. Yeah, it's just, just a draw Season Pyromancer. Okay, we go to. No, we, we actually die if they. Um, <laughs> I was just supposed to cast the Ragavan because you actually just died in the den of the bugbear if they block. But a 4 2 split for a bolt push for this reason? Maybe, I don't know. Um, maybe. Oh, they did a block. Okay, that's the only way we can win. <laughs> okay, cool. We were just dead. Now we're not just dead. 
It only misses Solitude and Fury. It also misses um, Titan. But I guess, like, you know, if we're talking about, like, what Bolt hits and Push misses. Oh, they were... Uh, <laughs> we dug them deeper for the season Pirate Monster. Oh, we have our own Dinner of the Bugbear. You're right, you're right. I missed that. Good point, good point. Good point. Okay. Fall to three and one. That matchup's always really weird. I, th I think that they're a slightly favorite. I've been really, really liking this deck. Part of me wishes I had played this in the Hunter Burton, but I also, I also kind of wish I played the the Phoenix deck because I think the Phoenix deck would have been okay in the meta game. And there's, I, I, I've never gotten to play the deck in paper, and I, I can't imagine that there would have been another tournament to possibly play Phoenix at. <laughs> Uh, maybe maybe one day if the metagame gets really weird again, but uh, it's like the Hunter Burns also like always a good tournament to play. Um, like more of a for fun deck because it is a, a charity tournament. Me and my friends uh, a couple years ago, like the 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 Hunter Burton the year before COVID started, we did a Secret Santa, where we all built decks for each other uh, and and registered registered each other's lists and. Um, and we, we had it so that our, we went into the tournament completely blind. We didn't, we did not know what we would be playing, which was really fun. <laughs> and, um, and we're, we might do it again one day. I, I got, I got registered John with a lot of fun ofs, like a fun, like a lot of like goofy fun creatures, like hot master and, uh, like kitchen beings, main deck tireless tracker. Um, it's really, really thoughtful list. Anvil deck that you made, people are playing a Jund variant that seems sweet. Yeah, I've seen uh, a Mardu variant that I think is interesting. What are they playing uh, green for? Like, Tireless Tracker? Or... Um, I, I, you might be thinking of, like, Arya's list, too. Hogpog. She, um, she's she been playing, like, a Mar like a Squirrels list that's playing, like, Goblin Bombardment, which is, like, her brew that, like, we took some inspiration for for the Anvil list. So you may be thinking of that, too. I'm not sure. I think this is the worst Ragavan Darcy deck without card advantage, iteration, charm. Well, we're not playing Darcy in this deck. Um, it, it's also true, um, in general, I actually think that uh, DRC and Ragavan play better with discard spells than they do with counter spells. They play fine with both, but I generally like actually prefer playing with them with uh, discard spells instead. Just like getting to punch through those cheap threats, get that curve really low, trade resources really quickly, and you're like low, res low mana curve deck. Um, and you, you also have card advantage in this deck. It's just not exactly the same kind. Well, this is uh, one of the saddest living ins I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, so we didn't know. Yeah, we didn't know what we were playing until we drew our opening hands for uh, for the first round, which was re really, really fun way to do it. Um, I think I eat it. It's kind of close. There's someone that did that this year. That's awesome. What do you think is the best best path for Hammer Post Slurus? I've been talking to my friend Matthew a lot about that lately. Um, the conclusion we've come up with is uh, we don't know. <laughs> uh, there's there's a lot of ins and outs to the case for sure. There's a lot of different ways to build it. Um, uh, we he settled on mono white with like some number of blacksmith skill. I can't remember how many he settled on, but but mono white with some blacksmith skills is kind of the um, the flex spots there. Maybe I should have thought these first, because now they could discard a creature, then violent outburst. Okay, just a living end in hand, and an Oktawara, which we get to discard with Kroxa. Uh Two living ends gone, so they only have one left in the deck, which means that they're pretty unlikely to just like grief us here um it's tough like i i think that you should play a cauldra and a nettle cyst that's that's something i think you should do in hammer i think that a lot of people don't like the nettle cyst because they they think it makes you weaker to interaction but but like in, in my experience what, what i really liked about uh, again what i really liked about the cauldra or what i thought was really impressive is all of a sudden Playing a cauldron in your deck turns Stoneforge Mystic to a card that you can ignore, or at least you don't have to kill it on sight. You like it's not really a card that it's a priority to use a removal spell on. It turns it from that into a must kill. 
all of a sudden you have to kill um you have to kill the um the stoneforge mystic on site or you are uh toast um not sure if i escape croak so i think i do i think just like pressure in him is probably correct here yeah, so that, that was that was something I really like about uh, Cauldra. And, and like even like sideboarding it out, like if you show it game one and you side it out and you cast a Cauldra and you tutor for a hammer, your opponent's going to be looking at that Stoneforge Mystic thinking, okay, I, I think I have to kill it because if they have Cauldra in their hand, I just lose. Um, and and so like that, that was definitely my experience playing against Cauldra with um, playing against Cauldra in the Stoneblade and so in the, uh, sorry, the hammer deck. Um, I could be wrong. Also, I haven't I haven't like been playing much of it, but that that was my uh, experience. Plus, we can move on to first. We can maybe uh, deal them damage with Croxa. Yeah, yeah, Cauldre. Yeah, Cauldre also has like g cool synergies, uh, giving haste, equipping for zero mana with Paladin, giving Trample, a a another way to give Trample beyond Shadow Spear. Um. So I like it, I like it, and but like, like I think those parts are kind of those parts are more obvious, right? Like the synergies with Paladin and stuff. Um, fuck. I guess I push my own Croxy here, and I put them to two, and then I plus Liliana, and I discard whatever I draw, and I win. Actually. It's your list, splash two Ren, three Gris, two Kroxa, and Mayhem Devil. Interesting. Yeah, there's a lot of ways to build the Anvil deck. We're definitely going to keep exploring it. I've really liked Goblin Engineer in the list lately. That card has felt super impressive to me. All right, GG. Very close game one here. Okay, so in this matchup, we want to bring in the Consumzals, the Ashiox. I think the Turok. Turok is like kind of nice to just cast because it grows. It's not always good, but it's good enough of the time. And I think you want to cut the pushes and the bolts and leave in the turbinates because they can kill like a random 7-7 seven, seven sometimes. Use the restroom real quick. Oh, sorry, the chalice. Oh, no, I need to update the... I wrote the cyborg guide for this list last night. I maybe forgot to bring in the... I mean, it, it, that's what it's in the matchup for. I'll need to update it. Let me. I'll. I'll, I'll need to use Mister. I'll. I'll check later. Um. This is probably not a hand we can keep with no Ragavan, no discard spells, no graveyard hate. The spike saves thinking Calder is good for hammer. I keep getting sick of my hand. Yeah, I did. Uh, I had like a lot more thoughts though, and. I, I really you could you could rewind and get my full thoughts stuck. Like I've I've got more than just called you good. There was there was like a little bit more to the to the comment than that. I think it was gonna to go to five. After more than a year, Wafo agrees that Hall is better than Colonnade. Oh. Praise be to Wafo Tapa. I love Wafo. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm I'm but what's good is that again, Wafo's minions, his uh his cult of Azurius players will all listen to him and finally cut Hall from the deck. This is a good day. Because they won't listen to me. <laughs> I think I'm going to put back the Consumes all in the Mold of 5 here. It's kind of slow. Gigante, thank you for 7 months. Appreciate you. Hall hasn't existed for a year. Uh, I don't think that that's true. I think it's been about a year. It's at least been about a year. I've been saying it for a long time, too. Okay, they've got two Cascade spells, which is not great for me. I think I should probably take the Waker of Waves and try to stop my opponent from finding a third land on time. Is DRC cut because you play HE on the board? No, it's it's mostly that, like... So, before Luris, you didn't have to play... Like, you, you still play Croaks of Turok as some, like, game cards, some Kologon's commands, but um, you didn't have to play as many three drops um, in, order to, in order to have a good late game because you had Luris. And so... That was always like really quietly one of the best parts of of Luris was that it, it really like it really lets you keep your 
um, curve low while still giving you like that like late game advantage. Like like you like it you know had like different deck building requirements than like your traditional mid range deck. But now that Luris is banned, um, like you have to play like we have to play Season Pyromancer and Liliana or like other three drops. And if you're gonna find room for all of these new three drops, then I think it just makes sense to... Okay. Maybe this was not the reason not to dash the Ragavan. Why would they let me hit them, though? I did find the land, too. Uh, got a deck tech for Funky. So it's like... And, like, the easiest way to find room for these extra three drops is cutting the DRC Bobble package, which especially makes sense because, like, the Bobbles are a lot worse now, too. It'd be tough to beat. Theoretically possible, especially because we have Spyro, though, so we're going to play it out. I should got mountain there actually. It's fine. I'm gonna leave the Inquisition in my hand so I can take the violent outburst if I am able to find like my terminate and or Liana's. Probably toast now. You the main deck chalice is nonsense in the blue red. Um main deck chalice is viable in blue white because you have access like it doesn't actually stop Chalice One doesn't stop any of your spells. But in, in blue red it looks like nonsense to me. You gotta get it out of there. Is a charm is not playable outside of like very specific combo decks like we were playing earlier today, but even there it is not um not a card in my opinion that you're very incentivized to include in your list. Um Raisin Borrower is also a card that like is personally not super impressive to me. Um uh, I, I also feel like your list is a little light on win conditions here, where you have Two Brazen Borrower, four Snapcaster, four Ragavan, two Jace. And I do think that in some matchups, you are going to have problems closing the game without Murktide Regent. Um, in fact, I, I personally kind of think it might be an easy thing for you to do, or somewhat easy, to cut the Chalice, cut the two Borrowers, cut the Isacharm, and play four copies of Murktide Regent. Two more lands. Brutal. You also have five four drops, which I think is like two too many. I think you can play, like, you can play maybe four, but I would like to see, like, maybe two Jace, one Cryptic, or one Cryptic, two Deluge, no Jace, but five four drops is too many four drops, in my opinion. Um, Spikes, Lily's out of Crooks is bad. Crooks is not bad in the matchup. Liliana also like, lets you discard your own creatures, too. Liliana's, like, better with Voidwalker in play, pressures your opponent's hands. Crooks is actually good against them. Like, you get multiple Crooks with triggers against them. You can maybe cut one. Um, yeah, I feel like I'd like to see... I feel like I'd like to see, like... If you're going to play the Murktides, I maybe just, like, don't main deck the Jaces. Like, you have plenty of advantage with the Snapcaster's iterations. So maybe, maybe actually play actual zero four drops or uh, one Cryptic Command cutting the Jaces and Deluges for Considers to help your Murktide regents out. Um, I would probably play, like, either three Magus or three Subtlety, but probably not two, two each. I don't think you need to dedicate that many slots for the big mana matchups, because they're pretty good. Um, oh, sorry, if you have three Blood Moons in the main, you don't need Magus in the sideboard. You don't need Magus. It's, it, you don't need, you don't need six Moon effects in your 75. That's way too many. Uh, you can sideboard Chalice to play it on zero against Cascade decks, but a card is not main deckable. So is Red Black Rock different from the video posted today? Um, I don't know what video got posted today. I have an editor that does it. I can check. Yeah, this this list is different. This is um this is a different variation of the deck we're playing right now. That is playing Obosh, and I, this is something that's been been on my radar for a while. It's like red black Obosh rock, and the problem is like you don't want to play. Oh, this hand's so close. We have our Chalice. We're one lander on the play though. I think we have to Mulligan. Okay, this hand's great. Um. What was I saying? <laughs> uh, so, but the problem is like Kroxa is like kind of like too good to not main deck. Uh, but the idea here is that if HCA, H H H Hidetsu consumes all, if this card is um, so good that you want to main deck four copies, you wouldn't, at that point, you wouldn't want to main deck Kroxa. And then this card also makes you not want to play Voidwalker because it, or you don't need main deck Voidwalker because you have main deck Graveyard Hate here. And so the, the idea is like, if you want to main deck for HCA, then 
Obosh is like actually a reasonable way to build the deck, and this deck's like very good against creature decks. And so I think it's like an interesting metagame way to build it that I don't think it's probably that good at the moment. Gonna thought season turn one. I put it bold to four, so your points are probably pretty safe. Um, I kind of wish I kept the second thought season, huh? I'll take the street wraith to maybe get them a little bit stuck on mana, I guess. Although I guess this also pressures their life total. I'm not sure which is more relevant here. Problem is, so one nice thing about Voidwalker is if you can get it in the graveyard, then you get to cast um, Living End off of it. Here, I think that I'm just going to be playing it as some extra graveyard hate, and maybe it's not good enough. Maybe, maybe it is. We'll see. Obviously, if I draw like Ashiok or HCA, we probably get to exile this graveyard, which would be great. Okay, so that was one of the unknown cards, the Spiral of Canal. They currently still have two other unknown cards in their hand. Uh, I'm definitely going to Inquisition. We hit a Living End. So if I cast... No, 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 no sorry. <laughs> Got a little lost in the saw. So I was thinking if I cast a Living End off the Voidwalker... No, if I did, if I cast a Living End off Voidwalker, I would get to... I would get to have Living End underneath Voidwalker again, and then I would take eight... But then I would insulate myself from... No, I would take more damage because they would Psycho Waker in response. But I would insulate myself from a top deck Cascade spell is what that line would accomplish. No Turok before Inquisition? I'm going to kick Turok next turn <laughs> and get them empty-handed. We also didn't know that the Inquisition would hit. Yeah, that's true. I guess I... Oh, yeah, I guess what I... Sh I shouldn't have attacked with the Voidwalker. I should have just sacked it in a response if they did draw a Cascade spell and then had the ability to uh, play a Living End off of it. Which is probably what I just need to do here is not cast it. Let's see what we hit. Curator, Misty. Yeah, yeah, if they draw a Cascade spell, I, I can insulate myself from that by, again, not by just leaving this... With the ability to sacrifice it. I don't I can't cast anything at instant speed here, but just if I can get I have, just putting the void walker in the yard means that it will come back with living end exiled. Although I guess it's it's already exiled, but another one would be exiled with the void counter, which would allow me to reset the board, which would be maybe a win. It's always like a little convoluted void walker versus living end, but understanding these interactions is uh very likely to be, uh, or very possibly, the difference between winning and losing a match like this. And so I want to make sure everybody understand what's up. Okay, so they're bouncing my Voidwalker in response. And this is going to make me discard it. So I guess I just sack and cast Waker, because it's the most power. I have to cast a turtle. I have to do the list, but if I send it back to you, yes, you can. You can double check. See if I have any more uh, thoughts. Okay, 4 1. We're going to go ahead and run it back, I think. Just do one more. Uh, this is maybe what I want to play in the challenge this weekend. I know I haven't played in. Uh, I haven't done a Saturday stream in like two weeks because I've been playing paper tournaments. Maybe three weeks. Ooh, it's probably good money. But I, I am gonna be I'm gonna commit to playing one this weekend. Keep in mind this list is local